Welcome back to the 2019 National Collegiate Dodgeball Championships. We're back here with the semifinals um, with MSU and Towson ready to go, ready to rumble. I'm your host, Gar Punnett, also with Colin O'Brien. What can we expect here from your alma mater? It's going to be a big game. Um, MSU back in the Final Four for the first time since 2017. Towson, their first ever Final Four. So, so we've, got, we've got something to play for. Yeah, they're, they're both going to be excited, both trying to get that championship game. Uh, MSU's only been there once in their, in their club history in 2013. And obviously, first Final Four for Towson, so, so never been there. This is the farthest they've gone. We'll I've, see. I've seen both teams play with so much heart. Um, they, I, I was watching MSU earlier today. We were all watching MSU earlier today. Towson, we actually saw um, yesterday. Yep. Um, I'm excited. This is going to be great. Be a great game. Here we go. Both teams running into the baseline. Neutral territory. All right. Looks Energy's like up. 31, Daniel Ofori Donkla. Did we already get okay. out on the rush? And then a hit from Jordan Watt, Towson's best thrower, an MVP candidate. I think right now it's, it's between him and captain for Grand Valley, Brandon Meisel. So expect Watt to have a big game, number 19 on this right-hand side. So anybody just tuning in for, the, for the, our championships here at Grand Valley, both of these teams in the semifinals uh, trying to compete for whoever might also be in the other semifinal match, uh, Grand Valley and CMU, Central Michigan University. Grand Valley, the reigning national champ uh, for the past four years. They're going for their six years. Six, six years. years. Six so seven years. Feet, yeah. Oh, they're going for their seven feet. That's yeah. right. Okay. So everybody, everybody's kind of pulling for uh, an upset here yeah. on the tournament, um, except those from Grand Valley. But Both yeah. teams sort of sizing each other up right now. Michigan State. We've got Michigan State here sizing everybody up. We've got our regular sort of hard hitters here in the black and gold, as you pointed out before. Yeah, black not, and not, gold. Not green, but, but <laughs> yeah. black and gold. Not green. Not the typical Michigan State colors, but black and gold. Um, again, each team sizing each other up. We got Towson here sort of also in, I guess, I, that black and yellow. Yeah. yeah, that'd be black and yellow. A Great big catch. catch. Big catch. On Captain Peyton Schuster for MSU. Yep, that was that was that was huge. Um, they're getting Towson's getting fired up. Jeff Hayden, number three one three. Haven't seen a triple digit uh, <laughs> Pop number. Ball. <laughs> pop ball already. Pop ball already. So, what's amazing to see with these pop balls? Um, we've got one up here that we'll show you all eventually. Uh, yeah, these these thick rubber balls are flying at sixty five to seventy miles an hour. Wow! It uh, to get hit with one of those, and then when those hit some sort of metal barrier or even somebody punches one out of the air, sometimes you can get a pop. And a lot of times the balls will pop because, oh, oh man, that ball that. slipped out of Jacob George's hands, flew all the way to the back, but 21 couldn't corral it in. KJ Daniels, he went for the stretch there and paid the price. He couldn't quite snag it down. But yeah, a lot of times a, uh, a ball will pop because the, the place where most people end up pinching the ball is right at the the, at the, scene. the nipple, like the oh, bladder okay, of okay. the ball. And that's where the it's weakest. So there's a little bit around it uh, of the rubber. That's the weakest part of the dodgeball. Got it. And so a lot of times, you know, it will pop at right there. There have been times when someone's thrown and they, they're they holding on. They still have that bladder, that nipple, and the rest <laughs> of the ball just, like, goes away. And they're like, this Oops. is, this is, <laughs> this is I don't have a ball is, anymore. Yep, this <laughs> is. Um, so what we see here is a, is a reset for each team to come to the baseline. Um, yep. I actually missed the call here. So I this was the pop ball. So oh, this is going to re reset. Okay. So that Memphis is getting a ball back now. And I think there might have been blood on one, too. So that's why they're, they're subbing one out. Yep. I was reading that in the rules, that yeah. usually balls have to be cleared for sweat, blood. Yeah, we don't want, we, you know, no, no, we don't not want any too blood on the dodgeball, yeah, no, just in case. Not tears on the dodgeball. Yeah, that's <laughs> usually saved for after. Um, but so great, I mean, great play right here. We've got still some of, yeah, some of MSU's top players. Sort of our one of our favorites. That's a number great four, spot. Number 14. Jordan Watt, clinical right there. Under the blocking ball of Weakland and hits him but in the leg. MSU feeling the pressure right now from Towson. I mean, Towson's been the second best team all year, and yep. they're showing it early right they now. They really are. Uh, for anybody just joining, uh, this is NCDA League Dodgeball at Granville, at Granville Valley State. Sorry. Uh, with 22 minutes, 37 seconds left to go in the half. Both these teams are doing classic dodgeball, trying to knock the other opponent. Um, oh. oh. 
tried to get that catch, trying to knock all the all of the opponents off from the other side. Um, when that happens, each team gets a point, and then the half continues, time ticking down as each team resets to the baseline. Ooh. A spin nice throw there gets a backhanded captain spin throw. Dennis Sullivan out, and he's been playing great for Michigan State today. So that's a big hit for Towson. That's a huge hit for Towson. We lost, so we still got. Is that Georges right? Yeah, he's 14. been the, the best. He's been the best player for MSU Critical all day. player for MSU. Um, he's going to try to hold hold the court down a little bit. He's got great dodging skills, great catching ability, and can make a make a snipe when he needs to. Um, I don't know exactly what the call was uh, here. It, doesn't, it, doesn't, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't seem to be a timeout nor a shot clock violation, um, but play seemingly just got okay. reset. So not there isn't a rush necessarily, but Towson advancing on, on the neutral. Um, I loved the fake out. Jeff Hayden, 3-1-3 on Towson. Didn't even have a ball and pretending like it was behind his back. Good team throw in the corner on Jack Hilt for MSU. He goes out. Down to just three Spartans remaining now. Jack Hilt, you might be familiar with, had a pretty critical play earlier where he was taken out and substituted for another player, hoping to decrease his surface area so that they might escape having a point counted on them. It ended up being a, an amazing point gained for, I believe, Ohio at that time. Yes. Yeah. It was great play by Jordan Watt right there. He threw MSU cross, Jacob George's cross, and Watt turned and made the catch. So. Oh, no, but Leslie's call, he stepped over as well on uh, that last throw. So, you know, it's it's like 11 on Here 2 right go. now. 11 10 on 2. Oh. Uh, make that, was that on 1. That was 88. Lucas Walsh getting out after a good team throw. Number 1 still hanging in. That's Dalen Clark. Nice block. Here we go. He's got to make a – got to throw some balls to stay out of shot clock violation territory. Good dodge there. Great dodge. Way to keep the foot – in bounds, having one point of contact in when you're making a dodge out of bounds. He's got to make a throw. He's in with he's in the 10 second Look. shot clock. Ooh. He was looking yeah, for the drop catch there. He's looking for the drop catch. That footwork makes me nervous. He knows right now <laughs> it's gonna be hard to knock out 10 people by himself. Yes. So he's looking, he's looking for that catch and he makes it. He makes the catch, keeping his heel in. David, Big play. David Guari out for Towson. So we get number 30 win. 31, Daniel Dunkwa coming in. Now it's up to both of them. They're going to have to try to make a play, get another catch in here. Hopefully bring, I mean, who's on deck? Who can you tell is on deck here? I know Schuster got out fairly fairly early on. It would be great to have um, Schuster back think, in. I yeah. think it might be Ooh. It might be 17, Barra. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, Evan I, Barra might be on, on deck to try to, if they get a, if uh, MSU gets a catch in here. Or no, it's it's uh it's eleven, I believe. Actually, okay. we've got so Jeff Hayden. I'm really impressed with Jeff Hayden up here, and in, in he's seems like a critical player here for Towson, who's just willing to be up front with no ball and try to make a catch. Good Ooh, dodges there, nice by MSU. dodges by MSU. So right now they're just MSU. We got two veteran players here. This is Dalen Clark's fourth season. This is uh, uh, Kobuna Fori Donkwa's sixth season. I want to say he's in grad school now, so they know they don't have to rush Ooh. right now. Nice. Good hit. Good kill. Did he get it? Yeah, he did. But they're, they're they're looking for that opportunity, that solo throw that they can make a catch and make a play on yep. uh, to bring in more people. But the, they're content just to methodically see right there he's looking for it. Yep. Able to able to block the ball from being thrown at that. And gonna Andrew Kerr the, with the catch uh -oh. for Towson. That's gonna be that's gonna be pretty bad. We've got Donkwa holding number Yeah, number thirty one holding down the team. And eleven drops it, but is team caught on the side, so player comes back Here in. Here we go. Oh, that's it, right and there. That's it. Towson okay. takes point one. Towson takes point one in about six minutes, 20 seconds. Um, critical early point for Towson. I mean, really trying to hold off MSU. I know that's hard to hear, <laughs> but I, I think MSU's perspective, they need to, Peyton Schuster got out pretty quickly, and he's their captain, he's their leader on the court, and I think he needs to make sure he, he's staying alive out there to have that leadership, you know, to be talking out there. Without him out there, uh, I miss you kind of falter towards the end. Right. And so I think that should be a point of emphasis. He's in the huddle right now. He's yep. he's calling out, you know, what they need to improve upon. And I guarantee, you know, he, everyone is locked in right now. We're getting ready to take this next point for MSU. So we can see right now uh, Schuster sort of guiding sort of the conversation. Lico, I see in there also doing the same, telling the team maybe what they need to do better. Um, doesn't seem like it's an it's an amp up trying to pump up the team. This is sort of this is seems way more instructional. Maybe take it easy, yep. make the smarter plays. Um, 
Still got lots of time on the board. 18 minutes, 44 seconds in the half. Uh, lots of game. Lots yeah. of game left. I mean, right now, MVP candidate Jordan Watt, he proved he's the best player on the court right now. He was lighting people up until he stepped over the line, but I think he got probably four or five kills easy and that big catch. So uh, he's, a pr he's been a problem right now for MSU. They got to look to take him out when they have that opportunity to. Both teams resetting at the baseline, going to get ready for this rush. Here we go. We're going to see what kind of action happens. Both teams giving it at all. Let's see what happens. Any quick throws, any quick outs? We've got one. So MSU comes yep. away. They MSU threw one. So we got, got Towson. Out. Yeah, Towson lost 3-1-3. Jeff Hayden. Here we go. 17 making a play. Oh, oh that's oh. a great. Tyler Schmitz with a shoe shiner right yeah. there. Love that, a shoe shiner. <laughs> Number 24, Tyler Schmitz gets 17. Evan Barra out. Here we go. Number 11 trying to make a shot clock throw. Oh, wait. Another thing to note, uh, Payne Schuster is all season long. He's been dealing with a nagging uh, finger injury. And so really, he's been not pinch throwing. He's been throwing open hand uh, majority of these tournaments. And he just saw, he just did a pinch throw. So I expected him yeah. in the final four now. He's gonna just We're not holding back. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's going he's going full throttle. He's sacrificing the, yeah. the finger here. Jordan really? Watt, another elimination. Wow. Here we go. MSU losing number one. Dan and Clark. The same, the same with uh, the open hand. Jack Hellett's been doing the same thing. He's been throwing a lot of open hands, so his arm should be a little bit fresher as he gets Ooh. hit there on the team Another, throw. Another loss, number three, Hunter Broski. Oh, sorry, number 13, actually. Um, Jack Hilt. Jordan Watt hits another. Is that Max and Teal in the corner? It was. Jordan Watt, he's got like a 75% hit rate right now okay. on his throws. It's, it's incredible That's to watch. That's pretty good. All right, we got both teams standing off. Towson dominating the neutral zone. All right, we're going to see who's going to make a play for that yellow ball that's, that's caught near the neutral zone. We got 23. Sandro Sandro, yeah, Sandro with Rivera. The, with, with the dodge. Um, that ball, it's, it's just out of easy reach for Towson, but they don't want to just give it up to MSU. Here we go. Yep, they're making a play for it, grabbing it, using it to defend. Oh, Ooh. good hit. I thought it hit him. I, I thought, thought it hit him. That might have been, been the side, though. Okay. I heard that, heard okay. that deflection. Yep. It might have been uh, the curtain there on the, on, the, on the side. Okay, we've got Rivera sort of eyeing up. Lico sort of casually, confidently walking up. Try to get a team throw. Looks like they just miscommunication yep. there. MSU yep. throwing two balls when they, really, when they were looking only to throw one to reset the shot clock. Yep. It's all about resetting, it's resetting the shot clock um, in these rules. Really determines the flow of the game with each team sort of trading trading throws. Towson dominating most of the neutral zone. Towson's doing a great job of, of pressuring MSU. So right now it's MSU's turn to throw, and Towson's still at the center line. They're saying, come at us. They have the ball advantage. Come they have, at us. They have throwers, and it's forcing MSU in to do what we just saw, making these long throws, which is going to be easier to catch, and it's, you know, it's going to be it's more inaccurate. So um, really Ooh. just a great game plan and great execution so That was so a good far. dodge on Lico. Oh, Lico throws. A catch. And Jordan Watt hits Georges for, for Michigan State. Oh, man. Jake Friedman also got a great, or no, maybe that was Christian. Yeah, I think it was Christian Carello. Got a great catch on Lico. MSU's Lico. Here we go. Backhand throw. All right. Brett Weakland in the corner there. He, earlier in their UM, the previous match, the Elite Eight versus UMD, he was on a 3v1 and came back and won that. So he's been a great player for MSU so far today. What's the mentality here? I mean, we've got some of these, these, these kind of eyeing each other down a little bit. They're throwing a lot of balls for shot clock reasons. Yeah. I think right now it's uh, it's very similar to how the, uh, MSU played versus Grand Valley yesterday, where Towson is just, they're putting all the pressure. They're on the front foot, and, and MSU can't establish anything right now. They're throwing these long throws. They're on their baseline, and Towson's just doing whatever they want. So I think more so than anything else, they just need to, one, get ball possession. Yep. And two, really, as a team, move as a unit. And so you're, if you're all going up as one, all put pressure, uh, pump faking, all pressuring, you're going to be able to back them down. When it's just one or two of you and then, like, three people are a little bit behind, yeah. it's not that same. Look, look Here at we go. Towson. Yeah. Now they're, they're, all, just, they're oh. just a unit. Whoa. That, everyone survived after Schuster. Great baseline dodge. 
I love how they know Schuster's power here. 68, I think. Yep, 88 just gives it. Yeah, Lucas Walsh just gives it right up to Schuster. So, and again, th this back team, um, sort of your teammates from behind, they're yep. feeding you ball. So critical to yep. sort of making sure you're properly armed. Pun definitely intended. Good Corello there for Towson. Schuster looked to throw, and Corello Ooh, came up. Nice dodge by Schuster. And backed him up, too. Just made him, made him think, kept him honest. Here we go. Timeout. Timeout. Excellent. Uh, Schuster grabbed his arm. It looked like he might be hurt for a second. Kevin wanted Ooh. to call on to go over, make sure, make sure he's all right. You know, they're going to yeah, need Schuster for the whole game. He's leaning in a weird way. They're going to need him for the whole game. So, uh, you know, if he if he if he's hurt now, it's going to be an uphill battle for Michigan State. You know, Kevin Wynn is not just the coach of MSU; he's a teammate of of, of Peyton Schuster in elite do for elite dodgeball. So, you know, he cares about all these guys. Um, but you know they have that extra connection of, of being teammates. Exactly. And he's, he's seen these these young players grow now over the course of a year or two years. Okay, 14 minutes left to go in the first half. We've got again Towson with just the dominant presence to to Sandra just Sarver. advance. Here you go. We're going to see a team throw potentially. They're going to back off. They're going to back. Here we go. Oh, good block by Guara right there. Do they get it? They get a player in, don't they? Or are that they full no, squad? It uh, it. It was just a clean block. So clean block. Okay. A big catch Whoa, on Corello by Sandro. Big catch. We get to see Dunkwa back in from that catch. Good spot right in between people. Toss is looking for those catches right now. Here we oh. go. Oh. That's a big loss. Oh, oh another big and loss. Wow. With the catch. Okay. We lost two players on that. We lost Schuster and number eight. Dennis Sullivan. Yeah. Captain Dennis and assistant Sullivan. captain yep. for MSU. Yep. Was, those are two big captain losses right there. Still got Donqua, who's newer in. And you see that? 31 on, or on Towson. Or yeah, sorry, 3 one, 3 Didn't even have a ball. Just threw a pump fake and got Donqua to, to, to flinch a little yep. bit. So yep. It shows what the power of just throwing I mean, your again, arm up in the air. I respect Jeff Hayden, number 313. That's all he's been doing. It's just he's been – he's clearly – a catcher. Yeah. Well, he's baiting them to try to throw something at him. He's just taking center stage, faking that he has a ball behind him, getting people to twitch. And maybe. Oh, Barely. what a brutal, brutal miss. Dan couldn't yeah, squeeze he it. Yeah, he couldn't quite. His hands yes. just kind of rolled out. Oh, he's feeling that right now. Ooh. And that was on Watt, too. Would have been a big catch. That would have been a great catch. Towson. Ooh, that was great. 3 1 3 managing to stay inside his neutral territory and not step over the line. Schmidt's a good Ooh, spot. Gets oh, man, Weakland. gets, gets, gets Weakland. Number 24 on MSU, one of the other captains as well. Here we go. Good block by Lucas Can these Walsh. guys, yep. We got Sandros Rivera still, number 23 on MSU. Guarding that corner, was able to make a play last time to kind of swing it back a little bit, get an extra, here we go. Excellent, nice. Nice kill on San on Rivera. I think it. I think it just barely missed. It, I thought it might have clipped him, but oh, oh sorry. sorry yeah. yeah, on Schmitz. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Good kill on Schmitz. Rivera holding in. Um, he's he's got to make a catch though. I mean, this is where he's done it. He did it. Yep. You know, only three minutes ago to get Donqua back in. Ooh, that just was close. Pure, yeah, pure power from yeah, Watt. Pure, yeah, exactly. All right. Now these two teams are going to need to kind of come, or at least Towson's going to need to come together. And tried. Oh, throws it right through just the chest. Tough. Man, Rivera thought he had it. Yikes. Another okay, team okay catch. another team catch. T it's 12 on one right oh now. Oh, my gosh. Here we go. So, what we're going to see is as, as 88 tries to make a throw, Lucas Walsh, he's going to start to field balls being thrown in his direction when he sort of exposes himself. Lucas Walsh is a very good blocker. That is, that is one thing he excels at. So. Okay, um, Lucas Walsh. As long as he has these balls in his hands, it's going to be a little tough out, but fielding. Oh. oh followed up yep, there. Follow I mean, up a trail ball. Andrew Kerr. What a great play on Towson. Wow, Towson really making a statement in this first half. And I would say uh, this is, you know. A strong Towson it's a, team. It's a, it's, a, it's a great Towson team. Yeah. Right? Um, they're they're they the best they've ever had, in, in, my, in my opinion. And how are they stacking up? I've, I haven't seen Grand Valley play yet. Yeah, it, I mean. Grand Valley is so deep, and that's what makes them some so dangerous, and yeah. so and why they've won so many years in a row. That 
one to 12, they have players. But the thing about Towson is everyone knows their role. There are some guys on Towson who yep. they're primarily just to block. There's guys like Jordan Watt and Tyler Schmitz. It's you guys that are our gunners. Um, you got you got some some pure catchers on Towson, but no one is trying to do too much or go outside what their role is on the team. And I think that's why they're really good. And um, so far in years past, they were really momentum heavy, where right. you know they they'd be getting four kills, kills or like a, like one way or the other. Right. And so um, I think this team is a little bit more uh, not reliant on that momentum, on totally. that energy. And so I think. That's, that makes you a more dangerous team when you don't have to do that, when you have the ability to get that momentum right. and, and go from being you know tied 10-10 to being up 10-4 in, in a minute. But they, they don't need that anymore. Um, now, what I love always seeing is you've got Towson definitely more relaxed after getting two points yeah. here. They don't really huddle up. They're just kind of each in their own zone. Yeah. Getting pumped up. I mean, we've seen, we've seen so far this weekend a lot of 2-0 starts. And the, the other team then gets that third point, and then all of a sudden it's a close game going yeah. forward. So, um, you know, you, Towson is definitely telling each other, we can't let up here. Let's, let's finish it, keep going. There's a lot of time left still. Ten, oh, here we go. Ten minutes left in this half. And MSU throwing off the rush. Um, they've done it twice now, and that's the first two times I've seen them do it uh, this, this weekend. So right. I don't know if that's a, a wise – a wise thing because so far Towson's gotten ball possession early and it kind of just held on to it and, and and picked MSU off one by one. Now we gotta see some big plays here off of off of number fourteen on MSU, Georges to kind of bring the team back. Lasky, um, the referee is calling Jordan Watt out. Oh. Yes. Jake he said, making a call. Schuster Schuster threw at him and he's saying uh, he barely lifted his leg up. I believe, but he, I thought that's what he was he was mentioning, or maybe he was just saying watch the, watch the leg. That's a big out on MSU while we were talking, number 14. Jacob Georges goes Jacob down. Jacob Georges goes down. Jordan Watt. Wow, nice underhand throw. Pie for a nice team catch. Jordan Watt had a guy. I like Towson. Towson's been playing with their numbers. I like. I didn't even realize that yeah. uh, David, David Guare, yeah, has, has the number pie. And, uh, Andrew Kerr is Oh, the oh, Towson really feeling that it. That was a great catch. That they was had an incredible, some incredible catch. team catches here. Um, yeah, Andrew Kerr is number 47, and his initials are AK, and he puts save it AK on the back of his jersey. Uh, so okay, okay. Yeah, so they, 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 they get a little creative with their numbers. They do, yeah. Andrew, oh, yep, 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 yep. I love it. Wow, was that Schuster that threw that ball there that just got ca that, that got caught? Uh, I the, think the it was. Catch? Yeah, that was that would have been a great get for for Schuster, but Towson able to hold it off by great collaboration. And I mean, again, they're on the back line. Jeff Hayden, look at I mean, look at Hayden. Yeah. He's just out there solo right now, ready to take on all comers, but guarding the neutral zone. This is clinical by Towson right now. I mean. So was, that a, was that a trap? I think that was a trap over there. I think they called it, yeah, okay. grounder or Ground, trap. Yeah. But MSU, I think they've had people step across half court maybe ten times this entire game. Yep. Um, you know, Towson is nice. just living in the neutral zone, picking, Ooh, Rivera picking MSU getting off. getting picked off. Yeah, they are. They're just picking – yeah, they just picked off Rivera. We've got Lico now taking over that corner spot up in the corner. And the thing you really want to do defensively is you want to make the other team uncomfortable. So you want to make oh, the good throw there. Big play with Jeff Hayden actually finally getting what he asked for <laughs> but wasn't able to handle the ball. You want to make the throwers feel uncomfortable. You don't want to just right. let them wind up, put Perfect everything they have in the throw, know like I'm going to be safe no matter what. Big play coming and in. Schmitz, number 24, looked like he was – Ooh, and so far MSU hasn't done anything. They're not pump faking in right. the back line. Right. They're not stepping into it a little bit. I feel like it, they're on their heels. Yeah, uh, Taos has just been able to go up, get their normal run up, and fire every are, every yeah. time. They are commanding. They are commanding a presence here in the neutral territory. Yeah, seven players left for Michigan State. Here we go, Michigan State. Oh, great dodge there. Great. Oh, we got another team catch here. <laughs> And Incredible. I think that's really – That's, again, that was Schuster's throw, and he is defeated <laughs> after not being able to get another kill. It's been, a, it's been a bit unfortunate where MSU's gotten several balls that have – good hits that have just popped right up. And the thing is, though, 
the part of the reason there's been so many catches is because of the positioning on the court. A lot of these hits have hit someone, gone up and gone backwards. Right. Where if that happens to Michigan State, that's that ball's now out of play. Yes. Oh, but right. instead, it's now in the, the middle of the court, and that's where all their players that's are. That's why I think, yeah, the commanding the neutral zone gets you a lot more field of play. I mean, the, the pace of this, again, with we're at 6 minutes 47 seconds here. The entire pace of this game has been driven by Towson. Yeah, they're doing whatever they want. Ooh, that was close. I, th I definitely thought that hit number 24, but we got Schmitz coming in here. He did a good cover there. He, Schuster's yeah. trying to get Watt out, which, I mean, they need to, but he came over and got a nice block uh, to protect his teammate. Okay, here we go. Let's throw some power. Boom. Schuster. He's looks hurting. Like it, yeah, He's it hurting. looks like his arm's hurting. His, uh, at, na at last year's Nationals, he's, he's a, he was a freshman last year, and uh, in, a, in a key game, he, he gave it everything he could, and he just kind of, he was gassed so by the end yeah, of it. He said he could, like, couldn't lift his arm. He was just done. Ooh. Yeah, no, that's. Some of these power throwers, they, they put everything oh they yeah, have. They One of the whole body in. Last, at last year's Nationals, there was a, a player on JMU who was probably the hard, one of the hardest throwers in the league, and he, his arm, he got dead. Yeah. He g gave out midway through the point, and they I had was, to call a timeout. I was that was throwing the end, it end of his career. Yeah, I was throwing it before, and that was the end of his career. Yeah. Wow. He I mean, like he was he was his graduating senior, and that was his last moment where it was just like his the, the he threw and the ball went like 30 miles an hour because his arm just like, like gave just like out. died. Yeah. Oh wow. The um, Towson commanding presence here in the neutral zone. We're kind of at the mercy of Towson on gameplay. Yeah. Oh, oh, good hit. Good hit. On Dennis Sullivan. Yeah. Another one. On Schmitz Dennis, on yes. Walsh. Wow, that's quite a turn here. A little high okay, there for wow. Watt. He was trying to get some, some downward spin on that. The Threw one, a little bit over. The one uh, the one note I, I've heard on Watt is he does tire. So he's been taking it really easy all weekend long, waiting for fi the Final Four, waiting for the National Championship. And so oh. we'll see we'll see how long, you know. If, a if rare non-team catch here. Sorry to interrupt. No yeah. worries. A good Looked like a hit. Yep. On Schuster. On Schuster. Out. Oh, that's Andrew Kerr for, for Towson. Man, Schuster is walking off defeated, trying to regain composure behind the curtain here. Now, if I'm MSU, you need to kill 30 seconds. Yeah. Because four minutes is going if, to – if a point is scored under four minutes, that time can roll over. So, no matter what, they ca they got to kill at least 30 more seconds because you need that time in the second half. If you're to go down 3-0, you yep. need as much time as possible to, to be able to come back. Um you know, and then they still have three people, so four minutes. I mean, minutes. at what point? At what point? They're fighting it out, but at yeah. what point do they st they step out um, and reset? I mean, is that I know, I've seen that a stretch yeah, usually with only one person it's left. It's usually in the second half, and uh, and when it's because um, right like, now they're just fighting yeah. for their life. I mean, I think at, at the, they got four minutes left. The strategy's got to be we're trying to kill this, and and Brett Weekland is is definitely at Michigan State's. Oh, oh, he, he was trying hold to hold in. on to it and keep point of contact with his toe in the court. This is going to be painful. But Come we, on. But week 24, Watt was aiming at there. He's definitely Michigan State's best player to kill Clot. Okay. So they got just over three he's, and a half he's minutes. He's scrappy. He can dodge. Yeah. And he's a t as again, he's a tiny target, so he's hard to hit. Yeah. Um, oh, he almost caught. This is going to be a long time to kill, though. It's a long, off. long three and a half minutes. Oof. Here we go. A lot of time to kill. Towson commanding. Commanding the field in the neutral zone, and Towson knows they have plenty of time. Yeah. They don't need to rush. They can. They're gonna let. I mean, this is what a two, an early two-up yeah. lead is gonna do for Towson. If this, if they're to get to another a steady minute supply, and a half, yeah. then you might see Towson pressing a little bit more. But as it stands, they're content yeah, just to Jeff trade Hayden one throw. Out for sure. Jeff Hayden yeah. tried to stay in, but he was out for sure. He doesn't like the call. No, but no, no. I he doesn't like the call. But that's he's, a great catch by Glory, yeah. and 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 Weakland goes out. Oh, Weakland goes out. Okay, this is where. You gotta stay in. Come on, number one. Dalen Clark mad at himself that he didn't get that catch, oh, and then immediately yikes. throws one to Andrew Kerr. Three-zero halftime lead. The 250 is gonna roll over. So there's gonna be 27 minutes, 50 seconds to in the second half. Wow. Okay. And three-zero thousand. I mean, at this point, you know, MSU's they need they they can't give up another one. So we thousand gets a point. Is it's this, gonna, it's this gonna be this game over. Time? This is halftime. Yeah. This is halftime now. So a a great first half for thousand. The way the um, so this is going to be halftime, everybody. So in the way the, uh, the NCDA rules work, when there's uh, time under four minutes, under four minutes um, it's actually going to roll over into the second half. 
So then what we're going to do now is uh, we're it's halftime. We're going to let these teams re <laughs> reorganize, really, MSU. Get some water. Get some water. Some get rid. Try to really try to figure out what the strategy is to overcome this 3-0 deficit. Um, Towson commanding the lead, commanding the court. Um, we'll, uh, we'll be right back in, in a couple minutes. Welcome, everybody, back to the 2019 Collegiate Dodgeball Championships. We've got the semifinals here. Um, we've got Michigan State University versus Towson. Yep. Towson commanding an early lead. 3-0, dominant half. Dominant, yeah, dominating the field of play. Uh, we're going to jump right in here to camera one as these teams. You know, it's Towson, it's Towson's first Final Four, but you wouldn't know it based on that first half. Really, they, yeah, they have, they have been incredible. Um, Towson here switching sides. We've got Michigan State in the black and, well, I don't know how to phrase it actually. We've got Towson on the right, Michigan State <laughs> on the left. Similar um, jerseys. Similar, yeah, schemes. similar color schemes. But, oh, what a throw. Towson commanding the presence of the court. And we're going to see what Michigan State can do here to, to push back against them. Oh, great out. Good hit by Dylan Clark there yeah, for Michigan State. Great hit. And uh, it's 3-0 Towson right now, and if they're able to hold on to this, it'll be the first championship appearance from a non-Michigan school since 2012. Yep. It has been seven straight years of two Michigan teams oh, in the final. Rivera getting out early on this on this point. What was that, seven, seven straight years of, of Michigan teams in the final? Wow. So that would be pretty incredible if, this, if, these, if Towson was able to hold off Michigan State, get into the final round. Sorry, six um, straight years. Six so straight six years. Six straight titles for Grand Valley, six and straight finals yeah, exactly. of all of Michigan schools. Grand Valley going for the seven Pete yep. um, this year, and everybody else trying to hold them off. Grand Valley undefeated this year. Um, yeah. Coming Towson, off of last year. Towson plays like this I mean, it, in the next exactly. game. This I think I think it's they'll they'll have a, a very good opportunity to to they're doing very take their first yeah, championship doing very little wrong here I mean even we're even seeing uh, Jeff Hayden holds off Georges number fourteen on and then and then hits him and, and then gets, gets him. him out we're seeing big plays here what a catch Peyton Schuster throws it and David Guari oh gets stuck in what his do we legs see? what do we see here we're asking right now the the referees are going I think. MSU is trying to say that Guari got hit by like Dennis Sullivan before that he made that catch in his oh, knees on Peyton Schuster. I mean, it's a big loss to lose Schuster. If and the referees are, are getting together, saying, "Here's what I saw. Here's what I saw." And I've really, I've, I've loved the officiating. I, I think uh, the NCDA officials have been really making sure that there can be no question about out, no catch, out. Okay. Head ref with Jacob Wesky there making that decision. Yeah, so, so whether there's no question about, you know, what happened during this during this gameplay and that nothing felt unfair or undiscussed. And I would say, you know, these are college kids. Right. They're 18 oh, to 22 well. year olds, some of them are they're gonna be they're a lot headed. They're gonna talk. <laughs> um but I've been very impressed um, yeah. this weekend where once a ref has made a call, uh the people the players have generally, you know, accepted it. They, they might be arguing beforehand, but when a referee says, Hey, you're out, they're like, What? Okay, like then yep. we go out. Now for anybody joining um, the this this our, our live stream here, 2019 National Dodgeball Collegiate Dodgeball Championships. Oh, great block by Jeff Hayden on Towson. Um, we're now in the second half, um, sort of an extended second half uh, for this gameplay. Um, we're seeing Michigan State and Towson really go at it. Towson commanding a 3-0 lead. Michigan State trying to make a move. They have to get more points, obviously, to win this match. Ooh, what? Had a hit in the corner, and Jack Hill so could not make that catch. Couldn't make the catch. Officials taking a pause to discuss. Another ball with blood on it. We're getting people to check their fingers. So you'll see a lot of players, they'll tape their fingers, and that's for, for two reasons. One, um, these balls can be a little rough, and they can really damage it up. And two, then it prevents it from, from blood, if it yeah. were to happen, from getting on the ball. And what we're talking about here is uh, the NCDA actually has kind of a specific league rule, and you're allowed to pinch the ball. And what Correct. that means is uh, really not just palm it, but grab into it. They're slightly deflated so that you can actually get a great handle on it. Um, 
And what that will do is that will dig into sort of the cuticle area yep. of your nails, and that might be where the blood's coming from as these, as these players are hurling these balls at roughly 65 to 70 miles an hour, that blood's going to happen. Yeah, <laughs> and I mean, a lot of these players get pretty callous. When I played, all my knuckles got callous and the, in like the inside part of like my palm by my thumb. So when you're playing twice a week for two hours of practice, then every other weekend essentially you're going to tournaments and you're playing for six hours yeah. or so on, yeah. on, on you know in a tournament you're gonna be relatively callous you, up, your, yeah. your, your your hand you know calluses <laughs> up pretty quickly so uh you know once that kind of happens it, it, it the blood doesn't happen as quite as much but it can still you know you might get a cut here or there and, and it, blood comes comes on the ball well what this is great is this sort of resets the momentum time stopped msu gets to take a breather they seem pretty collected. They're at the baseline, ready to go. They want to make their advance on Towson. Probably good for MSU. They're already down to six players. Um, just over three minutes, or just under three minutes into this second half. Towson has eight players, nine players in. So nine on six, man advantage for Towson. And th there was one too many balls got put back on the court there after, <laughs> after some got removed for blood. <laughs> Okay, so here we go. Towson advancing into the neutral territory. Uh, what you're seeing here is Towson can cross the middle line into the neutral zone to make a play on, on Michigan State. What you're hearing in the background also is the team's counting down for their shot clocks. So each team needs to make a, makes a throw. Ow. Yeah, that one looked like it hurt. Uh, number 11, uh, Jack Antilla. Definitely hurting after something hit his hand. Yeah. Um, but Towson still maintaining presence in the neutral zone to really really keep MSU from making a significant play. Yeah, it's, they've, been, they've been living there all day. MSU's barely gotten off their baseline, and that's really been a, uh, a huge impact in, in this game. Oh, Liko. Oh. Liko's well, going to be out. Liko's, Liko's going to be, be out. out. He got hit, I think, with two balls. Even. Okay, so okay. I think even though... They were able to make that team catch. He had stepped out of bounds regardless. Yeah, yeah. But Jacob George just comes back in, and he's been relatively quiet for MSU. Yeah. MSU wants to come back. They're going to need Jacob to make some plays here. I mean, he was such a significant presence in the earlier games, the games yep. yesterday. He, he's, I mean, maybe it's because he was facing yeah. lesser opponents in terms yeah. of team play, but he's got to make a play on Towson. Oh, ground right before ground hitting right the hand. Ground right before hitting the hand. Still again, there. round right before hitting the hand. Um, we've got, wow, oh, whoa. Jeff Hayden, really tornado of a thrower, and trying to fake out. Whoa, oh, that's it. That's Antilla, Antia. And with Jeff Hayden, I don't know if he lost a bet or he just wanted to do it for Nationals, but if you've seen his hat come off yet, he is sporting quite the interesting haircut where uh, – it's as if he were bald, yes. but he shaved his head where bald people are. <laughs> yes, he's rocking the the retirement look right now. I, it's, it's, I, it's, I, oh, and look oh at there that. it is. Oh, so he gets a catch and then gloats right, right exactly as we're talking about it by taking off his hat. Oh, he's going no hat now. <laughs> he's, okay. he's sporting it. So there you go, Jeff Hayden sporting the... Again, I wish I knew what to call that. The bald look, Yeah, the, I, the, I guess. the balding man, <laughs> yes. <laughs> The, res the, the definitely receded hairline. Yeah. And that was an impressive catch because he had a ball and he just dropped it and then waited. And, he, it, and he, he thought it was the throw was coming a little bit early and then he just said, no, come on, throw at me. And Jacob threw and, and, and Hayden caught it. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is confidence when you see Jeff Hayden just walking around nonchalantly. Yeah. Here this we go, Jeff. He's going to try to probably fake him out, then give a – here we go. This is the most impressive I've ever seen Towson yeah, play. Yeah, Towson. In, in, in my time in the NCDA, th they've had some very talented teams. They've had some great players. Um, but this is by far I mean, I, the I most kinda, cohesive they've ever played together. I kind of feel bad because I think we should be – there should be more to call, but Towson is just demanding yeah. the field and demanding the flow. I mean, definitely not with – Presumably they take this last point here, eliminate Schuster and Clark for Michigan State. They'll go up 4-0, and, and that will pretty much be all she wrote for Michigan State. Yeah, yeah. And that's not to take away from what Michigan State did this season. Right. They're a super young team. Um, their top players are all first- or second-year players. They're going to have a bright future, and 
you know, there's early talks from our chief of content, Kevin Bailey, who's going to be calling these next two games, that, uh, you know, Michigan State could be the, the favorite Ooh. for 2020 Nationals. Really? Okay. Young team, yeah. going to get some more IQ under their belt. But right um, now it's all Towson. Right now we've got Schuster. And yeah. Jalen Clark left Schuster in for Schuster and Kalen State. Clark really trying to, guarding the corners here. Towson commanding the neutral zone. Again, Jeff Hayden getting borderline. Oh, good for Jeff. I couldn't tell if that hit him. Yeah, good honesty there. Yeah, great honesty. Good block there for Towson guarding Jordan Watt. So again, 20 minutes left to go in the second second half, and Towson commanding a 3-0 lead off of over Michigan State. If anybody's joining us just right now during this live stream, each game, two 25-minute halves. Uh, try to get as many points by eliminating all the players on the other side of the team, other side of the court, the other team. And right now what we're seeing, Towson. Again, we can't seem to <laughs> say it enough. Just taking their time. Great team throw right there. Good dodge though by Dalen Clark. Yep. Landing, he's very good where he jumps and he makes sure whatever that foot is that's inbounds is landing first. Right. You don't want to land out of bounds out, inbounds because yeah. then you're gonna be you're gonna yeah. be out. So I mean, what's pretty interesting is to see Schuster over here in the corner giving it his all. Clearly, I think his arms hurting or yeah, something. I mean, his fingers definitely. Yeah, it's been bugging him all season. I think his arm might be be gassing out just from throwing so many dodgeballs all weekend. And a oh big catch. wow, big catch! Bringing in is this Rivera back it into is. play? Bringing in 23 on Michigan State. Now Rivera's got some hands on him, so if they could somehow turn this into some more of a swing. Oh, good team throw. Yeah, Tyler Schmidt, Jordan throw. Watt, two best Not throws. only did they hit him, but they backed him out. Yeah. Two best throwers on Towson saying, we'll take you right back out. Yep, that was pretty impressive. So what you're hearing in the background um, is the shot clock. So each team counting down for their team to make a, make a throw. If they don't make a throw, one of the rules of the NCDA is that each the team that has a shot clock violation will relinquish their balls to the other side, which would be devastating for Michigan. Great jump by Schuster. Landing in bounds. Dylan Clark here looking to kill this shot clock. Wow. Towson looking for these catchers. They know, hey, there's, there's, these throws are coming. They're just trying to burn it. If Michigan State leaves it up, Whoa. they're looking to catch it. That was pretty close there from MSU. Number one, Dalen Clark almost they're, stepping they're up. Colin Dalen, Tyler Schmidt's there. Oh, wow. Just Dalen grazing Clark. his foot as he was trying to avoid that. Wow, this is all right. Oh, hit ground beforehand. Hit ground. Oh, and that's can't corral that's it. That's it. That's Schuster, and he knows. I think he knows what that what that and, means. And, and Rebecca Chappelle in her last national is saying, "Hey, it's okay." And again, this Michigan State yeah. team, last year it was a rebuilding year. Yeah, you know, we we were one of the the top teams in 2017, and we graduated a majority of our roster, and so. For them to come back, be back in the Final Four just uh, a year a year later after that down season, um, is really a testament to to all these young players and 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 the veterans there who coached them up. Yeah. You know, Coach Kevin Wynn, you know, going to practice, and getting the strategies down, getting the technique down, um, and even though you know they're they're down 4-0 right now and, and they're, they're going to lose this this Final Four game, this is still an incredible season for for Michigan State. And again, the future is bright. These guys are young. Yep. They're only going to get better, and. Uh, you know, good energy here from MS Mission State, doing a little go green, go white. Now, when did you step out? When did you graduate from the team? 2017 was my was my last national. So you work. played maybe with some of these guys. Yeah, yeah. I played with Dalen Clark, Sandros Rivera, uh, Lucas Walsh, uh, Afori Donqua, and Rebecca Chappelle, uh, who, who's stepping in now. And um, and Andy, uh, Young uh, Xian Zhu, as, as, as we say, but his nickname is Andy. So right. those, those six <laughs> players I played with back in 2017, which means the other 12, are all are first all or new, second year right. players? We're all. Um, so not a lot of experience on this team versus Towson, who scores, you know, several. You know, most of their players are three or four year guys. False start, it looks like. So that's a warning first, right? Correct. Okay. So on then on a second false start, you're going to get a captain penalty. Where your captain, who will not be happy with you for false starting, will, will be start the <laughs> start the game in the outline. Start 
in jail though, right? Correct. If he doesn't, okay, so he, he's still he's yeah. in. Oh, and now a false whoa. start on Michigan State. So those are the warnings for both teams. Okay, so this is where this is where we get into penalty territory on both right. of them. So this is this is for real now. No more warnings. <laughs> let's see if let's see if they're a little more conservative on Michigan State or uh, whether they're going to try to make up for this time. All right, fair rush in. Oh, Andy gets the gets the ball. Gets the ball, yeah. Sandra Cervera hitting number 27 on Towson on the opening rush there. Ooh, Talon Spore, one of the captains for Towson. Okay. He's got to be pleased with his team's performance yeah. so far. Now, what I want to, I'm curious, it doesn't really look like they're resting their players in any intentional way on the sidelines. Um, but, yeah, I know, I know uh, it looks like. Watt is sitting, uh, he's not on the court. Oh, okay. Um, Schmitz, uh, their, their other big, tall lefty, he's a power thrower. He's not playing, so, so they definitely, definitely are resting. Yeah, okay. definitely a couple guys, and, you know, there's there's only six spots. Okay, so there we go. That's what we need from Georges. You don't want to, you know, in general, you probably don't want to put all six of, of your reserves in right. because, you know, Michigan State's a little talented team. They take a point in two minutes, all, all you know, because you, right, you know, you took it easy and you st st uh, took your foot off the gas. Maybe all of a sudden, you know, that's the momentum they need. But and we kind of saw that with uh, MSU Ohio. Exactly. Yeah. And um, there was a game yesterday, CMU VCU, where CMU went up 2-0, really took the foot off the gas, and then VCU wins an overtime. Great catch. That was number good five. Hit. David Kier. Good hit. Was that younger there? 16. Yes. 16. Good hit on Lucas Walsh. Lucas Walsh, give him a good clap saying good hit. All right. MSU losing number 14. Georges. So Towson Jacob. is going to go to their first ever national championship game. And again, this is going to be the first team that isn't from the state of Michigan in the championship since 2012. Um, just an insane streak that is being broken right now. Yep. And they're looking to break a bigger streak, yes, which is not just are. in the championship. They're looking to be... They break Grand Valley's six straight titles. The, the NCDA. And they're looking to break the demigods. <laughs> the 12-year the streak of Michigan schools winning. Yes. So it's yes. four, four titles by, Michigan, or by, by Grand Valley State, a Central Michigan title, a Saginaw Valley title, and then six by Grand Valley. So yeah. Well, you know, maybe MSU. I'm not going to get anybody's hopes up with MSU, but yeah. it looks like Towson could end up facing a Grand Valley a or Grand a Central Valley Michigan. Or a Central find out Michigan. Michigan. Yep. And, and that in, that in itself is going to be an amazing game. I mean, those that's guys been are the national championship yeah. the last four seasons. So they're meeting, they're meeting one game early or this year, but uh, definitely looking forward forward to that. Which makes it so exciting because that means whoever's going to show up um, in the finals, it's going to be a great matchup. Yeah, and I think you know, look at these teams right now. There's there's four <laughs> only four teams have ever won the title: Ohio State, Grand Valley, Central and Saginaw Valley. So Taos is looking to become that fifth team. Okay, great team catch on, on Michigan State. Um, I mean, both teams there for about 20 seconds look like, well, not 20, I guess 15 seconds yeah. look like they were just sort of and sometimes, it easy. Sometimes when a count, you haven't uh, heard the count from either side and it's you threw pretty similar timings, you know, sometimes players are unsure whose throw it is first, and so you don't. If it's not your, if it's not your turn to throw, in general, you want to let the other team throw first. So sometimes when it's just quiet, the players are waiting. Okay, whose count are we going to hear hit nine yeah. first to let us know? Okay, oh, it's our throw. Yeah. Oh, great, great throw, Andy able to dodge that. Here we go, Riviera, or Rivera. Nice throw. Good pump fake easily, by Dalen on the side there. Dodged. Here we go. Nice team throw potential. Yeah, Towson Michigan backing up. Michigan State pushing forward. Michigan Ooh. State putting putting the reserves in for Michigan State. Um, you know, getting Ooh. getting some Final Four playing time. But Rebecca actually over. We haven't seen her get much yeah. play time. It's good to see her. And Rebecca was uh, was a mainstay for for years now. She uh, was when when we were at my last couple of years, we didn't have a tremendously deep amount of players. So a lot of times we'd only go to tournaments when I mean, this was with there was 15. Yeah. So we'd only go with about 18 players a lot of times, and yeah. and Rebe even then Rebecca was a mainstay of our starting roster. So she started uh, most points for us. So, uh, you know, might not be able to throw as hard as some people, but 
She's got a good, good, accurate throw and good catcher. And most importantly, she stays alive. And a lot of times that's really yes. important because <laughs> not, not getting down to that 10 clock is so vastly important. And so just having someone on the court who I knew, she's not going to get, gonna she's get not do something stupid and yes. get hit. Like she's going to be on the court till the end. That's very valuable. I mean, a lot like Jennifer. She was really exactly. Yeah, yeah. she was she was doing so well facing down the rest of the teams. And you know, Michigan State, you can see it on their faces on the sideline. They're disappointed now, but uh, they're going to take their victories when yeah. they can get them. It was a it was a, a big growth season. They they struggled in the in the fall with a lot of new players, and uh, you know, to make it to the Final Four, that's a you know, it's a, it's a successful season in my book. Just over 11 minutes left in this one for Otausen, and still kind of uh, in control here. Ooh, nice gameplay. All right, I mean, they're trying. Yeah. They're missing, MSU's old and strong. We still got 10 minutes. So we've still got 10 minutes in this half. Really, both of these teams, oh, great throw by number 14. And if I'm Towson's captain here, you know, I've set, I've set my top guns, but I'm telling everyone, hey, we're shutting down. We don't, we, we yes, don't need to light right. anyone up. Save your arms. we got one more game. One more. There's no reason to just to be throwing your arm out here in a game that's <laughs> right. already won. Yep. You know, this is, this is the sixth game Towson has played this weekend. They played three yesterday. This is their third one today. They have one more. So you're going to be tired. If you're running up and down the court all day. Your legs are going to be shot at the yes. end of this. Your arm's going to be exhausted. So... If I'm a Towson captain, I said before this pr this point, hey, just take it easy. Take Let's it easy. Walk, yep. walk up, walk back. Nothing too crazy. They're gonna have a nice break while the the second semifinal, Central Michigan yeah, versus Grand Valley. So they're gonna have a Witches. little break there. But um, you know, there's there's two two uh, frames of my, uh, frames of mind for that. One, you you get a break. You can yep. get some energy Regroup. in you. You get some some water, some Gatorade. Or two, you're gonna be, you know, you're gonna be fresh, or you're gonna be stay warm mm -hmm. after if you play that second game where you're not sitting getting cold and having to warm yeah, up. Yeah, that again. will definitely be the challenge for Towson as they wait for the final, exactly the final matchup. Um, stay loose, stay warm, stay ready. Um, although I know they're gonna be glued to the, <laughs> they're gonna be glued exactly. to the Grand Valley uh, Central Michigan game. So, and no matter what happens, I'm excited for the, for this final because. Uh, because it's been a Michigan uh, final the last six years, um, and the Michigan schools play each other so many times, all the Michigan schools know each other inside and out. Right. So it's going to be interesting to see Towson, whether Beavers, Grand Valley, uh, or Central. You know, they've played, but they aren't as familiar. They, they don't. They don't know every thing, single thing each player does. So it's not going to be that. That. Uh, it could it got a little monotonous at times in, in, in years past because it was so. I know what you're doing. Yes. You know what I'm doing. Yes. It's going to be a little bit more unpredictable. Yes. Uh, As we got two new teams. I yeah. Mean, yeah. So well, let's see. I mean, hopefully hopefully we'll get a, a Towson in here. It would be really interesting if we got a Central Michigan. I'm not pulling for Central Michigan or Grand Valley. Yeah. I'm pulling for it's going to be a great final, and I'm really excited. But right now we've still got eight minutes left in this second half. And Towson's Ooh. on the 10 clock. Ooh. Not anymore. A nice. Guari popped it up. Realized he could catch it, looked <laughs> up, made that catch, brings in a player, and Dalen Clark goes out for Michigan State. Fantastic. Oh, we're clearly getting some arms here. They're hanging pretty heavy. Andy for Michigan State here. I think that's KJ. Yeah, KJ yeah. Daniels. His, his right arm is it's hurting. He's not, he's not really making any throws right now, and he's really working that arm. And that's, again, I, I think that's going to be – Tournament wide, as these players are, they're going to start to make mistakes. Yep. They're going to start to throw weaker throws than they would like because they're exhausted. Especially <laughs> when you get to. <laughs> what, what hour are we on? I mean, this is. Um, we started at 8.30 today. 8.30, yeah. So, so it's, you know, currently three. <laughs> so we've been going, and these players have been just pushing yep. it from baseline to neutral territory all day. Trying to make it through the tournament. You know, I, I played baseball growing up. I played soccer, you know, basketball, you name it. I'm telling you right now, <laughs> there's nothing that's made me more exhausted in any sports I've ever played than dodgeball tournaments. The dodgeball tournaments? I, I come home after that and just everything hurts. Your entire <laughs> yes. body is sore. 
<laughs> and <laughs> the thing is, because when you're th when you're playing this, you're throwing all out so frequently, yeah. Yeah. where it's like you're not just like throwing you know throwing a ball like in baseball, it's like a ground right. ball, it throwing is, to yeah. first. It's you're making putting your entire body into these throws, upper arm, time upper and torso time rotation. Again. Yeah, and you know. When I was playing, I was I was our main shot clock burner. Yeah. And so I'm throwing hundreds of balls every game, just like <laughs> over and over. And I come to the end of the day, I'm like, I can't move. I cannot move my arm. I mean, while we've been talking, MSU has whittled down Towson try in an effort to get that point, put a point on the on the board. Um, I'm sure they don't want to get shut out. Oh, we're, we're entering the final six minutes of our first Final Four game. We started with 22. Yep. We're down to four. It's about to be three. But, you know, th there's a lot of great teams in, in here, and Towson's proven the, the, they're, they're one of the greatest right now. So did they just call the game here? Or what happened? a shot clock violation. Shot clock violation, okay. And Michigan State looking to take a point okay. here, you know? So they're not calling. They, when, would they call the game? Or I, I'm going to guess after this point, even if there's, if there's over four minutes, it'll be called. Okay. I, I think. Both captains will be like, you good? We're good. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Yeah. Especially, I think especially <laughs> Michigan State takes the point. A lot of times, uh, you know, you, you, uh, you'll get that point, morale, morale right. booster. Yeah, yeah. And you'll be like, <laughs> like I got to win. Yeah, I'll like, take the win. And yes. you'll say, like, we're good. Like, there's no need, you know, if there's five minutes left, there's no need. And as you see right now, another, another rule is uh, the clock continues to run. Uh, it's called a, a, a rolling running clock if – it's a four-point lead, and okay. so both teams can say yeah, it's like it just goes into effect, just puts the game play exactly we're along, because yeah. there's a lot, there's a lot of stoppages sometimes. Yeah, and so when the game four points, no one comes back. I don't think there's ever been a four-point comeback deficit yeah, in, comeback. in <laughs> NCAA history. I think history. I would have heard about that. Already. So um, here we go, it's just lining up, take on KJ. That's a, that's an out for KJ. Okay, Rivera gets his kill. 69 upset. Guari realized he, that there was no ill intent from Sandros there. So he a good good leadership by Towson's captain David Guari there to say, hey, it's all good. You know, yep. he was upset, but you're you're fine as well. All right, so we're down to down to two. So yeah, this will be the last point now. This two three on Towson. And MSU looking to make it four one. Oh, good hit so in the yeah, corner. Good hit in the corner. Um, definitely taking it easy. <laughs> called timeout. I believe okay, timeout. Okay, timeout. Okay. So I was like, everyone is pretty relaxed right now. So yeah, you you'll see they wanted to keep those balls re get reset. So Michigan State team through there, and then Towson calls timeout right after to say, all right. Now you guys aren't def aren't defenseless. You, ha yep. you have a blocker in front of you now, and uh, now reset. Trying to kill this kill this time. All right. So Towson with two two guys left. Trying to you know MC wants off. this point, and, yeah. and Towson doesn't want to give up this point. They want a nice shutout. Yeah, it's, they, they want to say 4-0. And yep. you know we we uh, we eliminated Towson in 2017 in the quarterfinals. So there's Ooh. definitely some pride here for Towson to be like, hey. He got Rivera Sandra's on that backhand uh, throw. Yeah. Cool Rivera, Rivera really stretched stretch for it on that uh, number 23 on MSU. Definitely stretched for it and thought maybe he could get uh, get the three out. Three minutes here for. All right, they're for, well, they're Towson clearly going to kill. play through this. Oh, oh it clipped him. Clipped number 22. He is <laughs> David Guare. David Guare gotten two outs back to back on, He's on the backhand little, throw. Little wry smile. Yeah, right a little there. really. <laughs> He's is that. That's and not Weakland, three. Weakland gets the elimination. Okay, One here we go. Player remains for you Towson. know what? I'm into this now. This is this yep. is going to get interesting. Can they? Whoa. Team throw probably here for MSU. All right, we had a ball come towards one of our booths. <laughs> Ball's over. Shot clock violation. Shot clock. Okay, so what we're going to get here, we're going to get Towson giving up all their balls over to MSU. And I'm, They're going to start at the baseline. If I'm MSU, I'm putting all four. All four players in. Let's we're go. Saying, let's hit them. <laughs> and then... Uh, That'll be that. Okay, off all. Fall, let's, let's see. This is gonna come. This is gonna be it. All cameras on uh, Towson right here, trying to survive the four the four ball throw. I'll count it up. Here we go. I think. And he's safe. I think he did it. I think he pulled it off. He's got two minutes and seven seconds left to go. 
somebody, they're gonna advance on him. Oh, an interesting dodge choice there where he had the ball in his left hand, <laughs> the, the throw is coming from his right. <laughs> and he Switch hands. Yeah. <laughs> and a shot clock violation again. Okay, so we get another chance here. Another chance here to Every now and then you'll see a funny, a funny where uh, you know, someone will make a mental error <laughs> and they'll have a ball in one hand and they'll just like stick their up. And, and Towson <laughs> just stepping out there. They're saying we don't need, uh, need him to get hit by four balls. All right, and, sure. Uh, they're, they're, so 4-1, MSU takes a point. Final score there. Towson advancing to the hey, national championship game. Towson, MSU playing with heart. And that was just, that was domination by Towson. Um, Jordan Watt, throw after throw, was yeah. just picking MSU apart. So if we were to talk to a Towson player, who do you think we should talk to? Uh, it's got to be their MVP candidate, Jordan Watt, number 19. All right, Jordan Watt. He uh, had a heck of a game. And look, they're excited. They're excited. They're going to the championship. Yeah, Towson's, Towson's pretty pumped up. Yeah, this is what's going to come down to, whether we could get – it's going to be Grand Valley versus Central Michigan in the next – uh, final four. The game. next final four game, semifinals on the road to the championships. Let's see what sort of magic Central Michigan can pull off against the reigning national champ. It's good. So right now, what we're going to see here is is some great replays. I oh, mean, there was there was that Hayden catch. Yeah, that was Towson. Guare hidden in seventeen. Dalen Clark being his, he was, Dalen Clark was the last guy for MSU a couple times. So really, I mean, this is so important for Towson, right? It's huge. I mean, this program has had heartbreak so many times. They lost in overtime two years in a row in the, in the in early on. Uh, they lost in 2017 to Michigan State, Ooh. where they tied the game up 1-1 with four minutes left and then gave, dropped a point in two minutes for us to advance to the Final Four. Last year, they're in the Elite Eight with Bowling Green, and they go to overtime, and their captain steps out to lose in a 1v2 or a 1v1. Um, some just horrible, horrible close calls for Towson, and this year was different. You could tell from the beginning of the year that this team this team was going, and they did it. They're, they Now they made the Final Four, they're going to the National Championship game, and. I know that they celebrate right now. They're not. They're not done yet. They're, they're not ahead. done. Yeah, they're not done. So we're gonna throw to Felix down on the court. Um, we're gonna gonna get some reaction from the the winning team. So I'm here with uh, Jordan Watt and Colin Spore from Towson University. You guys just won the Final Four game. You guys are going to the championship. How does it feel? Yeah. I mean, it's great. I mean, we've come a long way since the beginning of the season. Um, look forward to playing Grand Valley. Well, that's what we're expecting, but could change. I'm so proud of this team. Uh, a lot of people wrote us off in the beginning of the year. I'm so proud of how far we've come, and we're not done yet. All right, excellent. Um, I know you guys have had a really great season. It's been monumental. Uh, after a heartbreaking loss last year in the quarterfinals, I'm so happy to see you guys have made it this far and turned it around. Uh, Jordan, so you had, uh, you had 12 kills and a couple catches this game. Um, other than yourself, can you name a few other players that really stood out? I mean, the kid with uh, half of a bald head. I mean, he's been catching great all day, Jeff Hayden. Um, of course, Guerra's just staying in, doing his thing. I mean, we got Tyler, Colin, uh, a bunch of guys throwing. I mean, doing everybody's doing their part, so that's big. Excellent. Yeah, everybody's playing their best dodgeball right now, and that's all we can ask for. Uh, yeah. Excellent. So what do you guys, uh, what's your game plan for the next game, the championship match? Uh, I mean, we're going to play our same style. Um, we'll obviously see how that goes. Um, if anything needs to change, we'll try to adjust in the middle of the game, but hopefully our style will work. Yeah, we're going to rest up, uh, watch this game, uh, maybe eat a little bit of food, Tiger Balm, Tylenol, uh, get ready to go for number seven. All right, and the last question I have for you guys, how do you feel about Tiger Woods winning the Masters? That's, that's almost as good as uh, going to the championship <laughs> <Yeah>. game, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Long, amazing. Best, best thing I could ask for other than making it to this game is Tiger Woods winning the Masters. All right, excellent. Hey, guys, good luck. Uh, we'll see you, you in the finals. Thank you. So clearly that's where everybody's coming from is, uh, is the Masters. They're going to come from the Masters and start watching us. Hey, I would hope um, so. I would hope so, right? Yeah, because we're going to watch some pretty good gameplay going on with Towson um, as they look to face either Central Michigan or uh, Grand Valley, I the think uh, reigning national champs. I think two things stuck out from that post-game interview. One, Colin Spore said, 
we're not done yet. And yeah. two, they said everyone's playing their best dodgeball. And I completely agree. Their Top to bottom, yeah. everyone was playing so great. Their gameplay was insane. They commanded the field almost every second yep. of that game. I mean, they stayed in the neutral territory, kept MSU on their heels. Um, we're looking forward to the next uh, semifinal match. Um, Central Michigan versus Grand Valley, the, the reigning national champ. It's going to be a great showdown, one we usually expect to see in the championships, but yeah. now we're seeing in the semis. It's going to be great. We'll be right back, everybody.